Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Paul Cramey. Um, on the last day of November, I can't believe that we're approaching the end of the year. Uh, you should see on the um, screen the uh, topics that we're going to talk about today. It's all related to uh, using the shipping uh, features within control. Uh, specifically, we're going to look at uh, to start off with the uh, dashboards, how they can play a role in uh, your use of the of shipping, and uh, similarly uh, using Explore to find and uh, look for things that are related to shipping. Then we're going to uh, do an illustration where we um, create an order, and we want to split that order in, uh, in the context of uh, having part of it shipped to one location and part of the order shipped to a second location. Uh, there are different combinations of how the how shipping can can work, but we're going to choose the uh, you know the most complex, so to speak, and multiple multiple recipients in uh, in, uh, in shipping activity. And then I'm going to wrap up to uh, this discussion. I'm going to just comment on um, as I've done some homework and have talked about uh, shipping with others. Some some typical kinds of questions that come up about um, about shipping. So and then we'll obviously open it up for uh, you know for discussion at the at the uh, in a couple of different spots. If you look on the on your go to webinar screen, you're going to see uh, four handouts that are there that if you choose you can download. Um, one of them, uh, two of them are related to the topic that we talked about on, on Tuesday, which is purchase order related. And then the second two are um, the uh, related to what we're going to be talking about today. So what I'm going to do now is uh, change my view so that what we're looking at is uh, um, not the agenda, but rather the um, uh, I want to flip over to control here just a second. <clears throat> okay, everybody should be seeing control. Right? Yeah, we see control. Is that what you're saying? Yep. Okay. We see it. Mm -hmm. So let's um, kind of start off. First of all, uh, depending on what version of the control database that you have, um, you may or may not have in your system um, dashboards that are related to shipping. So if you look up in the uh, dashboard here in the top left in the, in the taskbar and then choose the downward arrow, um, you may or may down in this area here, uh, you could see perhaps as many as three different dashboards that are shipping related and some of the more recent systems you may see that you don't have any down in this in this area the ones that are predefined and um, and shipped with the system so in that case what we're going to do is pick one of the three that uh, that in in some of the systems that, that already exist I'm going to pick one of those and we're going to create the dashboard, okay? So there are three that might exist and those are uh, related to a uh, dashboard that contains three different instruments. One is things that are to be shipped. One, that, uh, one other instrument that is things that are going to ship this week. And then a, a third instrument that is will allow the um, the um, uh, shipment to work with as a sub explorer. And the other two that could exist in your system um, have multiple instruments of up to five or six. And they that might be one that if at the order level, uh, it could be things to be to be shipped, things to be delivered 
things that the customer will pick up and then a quick look for stuff where you can just enter an order number or something like that. And then that also has uh, the ability to generate a shipping related report. And then again, the uh, sub explorer for, for shipping. And then the third one is very similar to the second one, except that it's at the line item level. So that would be to be shipped by line view, to be delivered by line item view, et cetera. And what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to create and walk through creating one of the dashboards uh, that has th the three instruments, to be shipped, to ship this week, and then the sub-explorer. Um, so if you look, at, as I said earlier, if you look in dashboards in your system, and if you don't see anything down in this area here that alludes to shipping, then they don't exist in your system. I have already added this one, and that's the one that we're going to walk through and actually create. So I'm going to select that particular dashboard. And now you're seeing the three different instruments, uh, things to be shipped, things to be shipped this week, and then a, uh, this is the sub-explorer. Uh, that's over on the on the right. It's called shipping detail. Okay. So in this particular case, um, I've got three different orders, actually two orders that have three different items that are going to be shipped. Three different three different shipments is a better way to say it. And this one, in the second view, the things this week. It shows not only things that are to be shipped, but also things that have already shipped. Okay, so this invoice number 1018 was actually shipped on um, November 21st, last week. And these others are one is scheduled to ship today, and then others that are scheduled to ship um, on the 1st of December. Now, the way these uh, uh, instruments were added, um, I would choose Add Instrument, and then I would come down to um, I'm going to just add up this one, okay? So if we look at it, <clears throat> these are the. This is where you set the um, the criteria for the dashboard. So I wanted to call it to be shipped, and then this check mark says that it's going to refresh every 60 minutes or every hour, and it will return. <clears throat> up to 200, 200 items that match that uh, particular criteria. For purposes of limited data, I have chosen to look at all dates for things that are shipped and things that are due to ship. I selected the same date range of all. Uh, <clears throat> Over here on the left, in the type, you can see that it's got orders and estimates. If it were me, I would probably uh, take the estimates off. And then down here in the status, this particular instrument, I'm interested in things that have not shipped. So that's the radio button. If I wanted both of them, I would probably choose all, or if I was only interested in things that had shipped, I would have selected the radio next to shipped. And then lastly, down at the bottom, in the filters, um, it's already showing that they're all five checked. I probably would exclude uh, closed and voided, 
and uh, that would be satisfactory to me, then I would come up to the top right where the, the diamond is, and I would save those settings, okay? Same thing true here in the next one. If I edit it, the refresh and the, the caption that I want, these, this is the, basically the same. Why that has 195, I'm not sure. That's not important. Again, I would choose the same, or in my case, all date ranges, and I would probably limit it to uh, orders. And in this case, I want both shipped and not shipped. Okay? And that's that center instrument where we could see both things that were going to be shipped and things that had uh, had already been shipped. And I would probably remove um, the voided in the close from this and then save that instrument. <clears throat> and then lastly, this one is pretty simple. The last instrument, I would edit it. And there's only thing here is the refresh part and the limit, and then put a check mark next to make it a sub explore and sub explore of shipment down here at the bottom. And that's what's going to drive that particular instrument or you know, that uh, that uh, um, instrument for you know for shipping. And again, this is what it would look like. I would save it. I saved it, uh, as you can see, to be shipped with my initials on it. Nothing magic about the choice of the, uh, of the name. Now, there are other two uh, dashboards that are fairly common uh, for related to shipment. Um, I'm going to check with uh, the Linda and Annette to see if uh, they would like to have me put together a, an instruction sheet uh, that walks through, uh, that could be distributed to all of you, that would walk through creating uh, this particular dashboard that we're looking at, as well as the as the other two. There's not enough time today, you know, to go through creating the the other two instruments, not instruments, but but dashboards. Okay, so that kind of gets us started um, with the um, with the dashboard. Uh, just looking at my notes here, a um, couple of these I've already talked about, and that is the you know what the dashboard actually is showing. So it shows the you know the two orders and the three different shipments over here that are to be made. Uh, one in the center here that has been made and three more that are waiting to be shipped. And then the, uh, the uh, uh, over here, the detail of the Sub Explorer. Um, and notice that the all of these on this one here have an SSA next to it, the order number and the SSA. And that is an indication of, you know, associated with shipping, okay? If we come over to the far left, in the middle, this one, as well as the other one, the SSA, SAA, implies that that order, number 1019, has one shipment for everything. The next one, in order number 1021, is indicating that there are two shipments one that they've labeled A and one that's labeled B. That's the significance of the, uh, of the uh, suffix that's at the end of the, uh, of the shipment number. Now, getting out of the dashboard, if we go up to explore and explore um, shipments uh, right here, we're going to see much of the same thing, okay? So you can see here on this one, I have said I want orders only, and I want to see both things that have shipped and have not shipped, and I'm only, you know, only interested in seeing 
uh, that for orders that have a whip or built or a sale status. So seeing in a in a explore an explorer view the same kind of thing, the same uh, in orders and shipment things that we saw when we were looking at the dashboard. So you can use Explore to see everything that you need to know about shipments. Or if you have, if your shop does a lot of shipping, then it might be better choice for you to create the dashboard so that you can be more deliberate in what it is that you're that you're looking at. So either you can find anything and everything about the about shipments, either using a dashboard if you want to create one or one already exists, or you can simply use Explore, you know, for that purpose. Now, with that said, we've got one more quick thing to talk about before we actually um, you know do an illustration that or two and I'm going to to do that I'm going to go up to setup and then I'm going to go to system setup and down on the left about halfway down see where it says shipping method uh, and carriers this is a list of the carriers, uh, DHL was already there, FedEx was there, UPS was there, and the uh, U.S. Postal Service was there. That may be the same list that you would see in your system. So under the DHL, over here, you can add the different services that that carrier provides. And if you want to, you can include the limits for different package sizes. So DHL is that one. FedEx has its own list of services and perhaps uh, package sizes. Uh, I'm going to skip that next one for just a second. UPS and the Postal Service. Now, I added this one, local deliveries. I know when I had my uh, shop, we would frequently, um, uh, rather than have someone from within the shop deliver something uh, locally, we would use a courier for that purpose. So I added local built for uh, uh, carrier for local deliveries. Said that it's for finished goods that you're going to deliver in your own market, and I just blindly picked that they're going to. Um, uh, the pickup meaning that we're going to pick something up from the customer, delivery for small items, delivery of banners, and delivery of rigid goods, and then uh, uh, any limit on, on package sizes. The way I did that was <clears throat> I came over to the far right and said new. Now I can enter the carrier name, whatever I want to call it. I can put in any kind of description that I want, and I can just start typing the services and then hit the enter key and come down the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the same thing over here on the right with the uh, with the package sizes if that's uh, important for you to add. And when you're done adding that carrier, just simply say save, and that carrier now will be uh, will be added. I'm going to close that. Now, the so you can add the carriers to your heart's content if you want to add new ones or or, or change them. The entries in this list cannot be deleted, but you can edit that carrier. And if you don't want to continue using that one, just simply say that it's not active, and then that will preclude that particular carrier, you know, from being uh, from being chosen. 
so you physically can't delete, but you can make them inactive. And at any time, you can edit the uh, information <coughs> for the different uh, for the different carriers. Um, the last thing is that there are apps that are available um, that you can um, um, purchase or, or get ones for uh, FedEx, Federal Express, I forget what they call it, and then the UPS, I think they call it WorldShip. Those are actually apps that you would uh, download and install on your computer. And as long as those apps are uh, running, so to speak, then control can interact with that particular app. So before you can do that, however, you have to uh, contact the uh, tech support department at Sirius because they have to go through a setup series of setup steps that allow control that allows control to interact with either the FedEx app or the or the uh, UPS app and as long as you're current on support then there's no charge for that app to be uh, integrated so to speak so that control can communicate it now the significance of that communication with FedEx or with you with UPS is that you can in, in an order you can um, um, put the order number in and go out to the at a Goliath control will go out to the app and pull information back into control um, or um, update of that particular like cost, the actual cost, for example, or tracking number and stuff like that. So before you can integrate, have it control integrated, first you have to uh, get the app, and then secondly, uh, tech support will have to uh, go through a setup step for that particular app, UPS or, or FedEx, and actually make the changes that allow that would allow control, you know, to interface with the uh, with the app. <clears throat> now I'm at a good breaking point um, to see if we've got any questions uh, so far. Okay, we have a question from Jeff. Hi, okay. Jeff. Hi, I was just wondering, does the app have to go on the server computer? Um. Let me just look ahead at my notes. I think I've got that covered. Um, the answer to the based on what I can gather is that the apps for FedEx or UPS, they must reside on the same network as the control computers the same network okay so it could be on the shipping computer uh, that's the impression that I that I understand yes okay okay I'll probably be calling later to get that fixed and put on for me okay okay, okay thank and you. Then anything else we have a question from Leah good morning okay. Leah. <clears throat> Hi. Um, is there an app for southeastern as well as UPS say that again I didn't catch for who is there an app for southeastern freight lines as like the UPS one so it puts everything in serious? I don't think I think the answer is no. I think the only two that are that have the ability to fully integrate at this point are FedEx and and, uh, and UPS. I'm not aware of others uh, other apps that can can uh, that can integrate with uh, with control. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yes, uh, uh, from Gina. Okay. Hi, Gina. Gina? Hi. Um, Hi. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I was looking for a place to like actually type a question and I didn't see it. What I wanted to know is we're currently not using, um, inputting 
shipping location, we just kind of know where it, where we're, we should ship something. So when I'm looking at the shipping dashboard, nothing's coming up. Can you tell me, or maybe after this webinar, um, if there's a webinar that shows how where you put the data in so the data will show up on the shipping dashboard? Hang on, because I think we're going to cover that as soon as we resume. Perfect. We're Thank you. Gonna, we're actually going to do that uh, illustration, okay? Great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Anything else before we move on? Nope. That's it for now. Thank you. All right. So, what I want to do is I'm going to take, in the, in the interest of time, I'm going to take... I am going to take an existing order and I'm going to choose number 20, 1020, and I'm going to clone it. Okay? And then we're going to walk through the use of the shipping stuff. So you can see I've got a digital print, four of them, and I've got a single uh, rigid print. So let's alter that and let's change the quantity to 8 for that one and let's change the quantity um, on this guy to uh, just make it 8 as well and that's it. Okay. So all I've done at this point is that I've cloned an order and I've changed and made, the, made an adjustment in the, uh, um, in the, uh, the quantities. Now I'm going to go out to the shipping tab. You know, you've got items, company, totals, et cetera. If you keep going to the right, you're going to see the shipping tab. Okay. Now, here <clears throat> in the shipping tab, you tell the system what you're going to do with this particular finished goods when they're done. One is don't ship it, that the customer is going to pick it up. The customer will, be, uh, will take possession at a billing address or I'm going to ship everything in one shipment or I'm going to make multiple shipments. Let's choose the last one. Now it opens up additional stuff related to what we're going to do and how we're going to ship stuff, okay? So in this next section, if the radio is on the store, that is your location. So you can have the shipping is coming from your location. <clears throat> you can change that and say that it is going to be from a third party. You would put in the company, the contact, and then the address. I'm going to leave it at the store. Then, <clears throat> um, over here to the right, you can say I'm going to use this carrier, or I could come down and choose UPS. So I chose UPS, and I had previously populated the carry or the uh, account number that I have with UPS and what my billing zip code is. If you enter that from scratch, then you can update the contact with that shipping information. Okay? Now, this is where it gets interesting. You can see that um, right now it assumes that there's one shipment. 
okay, and the details of that one shipment. Um, this is going. This is the address of who it is shipping to. Okay, so you can have that based on what the contact is. I can come out here and add another one. I can add an item based on the station, which I've not played with personally. And I can ship to multiple shipping addresses. Okay? Now, this is a pretty powerful feature that I've not worked with. But you can import, you can either, if you got a new address, new shipping address, you can either enter it manually when you choose add, or you can go, if you got multiple addresses that you want to uh, have in your system, you can import those. Now, the key to that to using that is that if you go to the Sirius.com customer website and then select uh, in the training area, go to Wiki, and then there's a control how-to guide choice that you can make, and then you can choose how to import shipping. And that's going to give you a very thorough set of instructions, exactly what fields are required you know, to create that list. And the nice part is that there is, an, there is an example file that already has been created so that you can see what is, has to be there. And you can actually use that sample file and import it to, uh, to you know to test it out okay so you can either manually enter a, a ship to address if it's not already in the uh, in the customer record and or you can import multiple addresses if you need to now I'm going to choose ship to multiple shipping addresses and it's going to bring up this dialogue and I am going to choose the shipping of, uh, for both of those, okay? Now, notice that it has created a couple of, uh, it had one because I cloned it, all right? And then it's added two others, okay? And the two that it added are the B and the C. So I'm going to focus on those Let's say that this one is going to ship via UPS, okay? I can select the service that I want. I can enter the cost that I think it's going to be. Maybe it's $15. Uh, the actual cost, we don't know yet. And this is going to be um, uh, one box. And the weight is going to be um, um, <clears throat> let's say that it's 10 pounds, okay? And the size, let's indicate that it's eight inches by eight inches by um, uh, 10 feet, okay? So I put in the size of it, and the insured value um, is the, uh, um, the order value. Let's put in um, um, Let's split this so that we're doing four to this one, 
now in notice that it populated the retail value, the, the insured value, which in this case was half of the uh, of the actual order. Um, when we want it to be the due date for the shipping, let's say that it's tomorrow. Uh, this is the ship date, and this would be the tracking number. If you're integrated with UPS, then this would could could uh, you know you can after the fact you can pre-populate it. Okay, so I'm shipping uh, half of the uh, roll prints, and I'm shipping half of the rigid prints. So now it adjusted the retail insured value accordingly because I'm doing half and half. Okay. Notice that I said I'm shipping. This one contains four and four, and that there are four each of the items left. Okay. Now I'm going to complete that one, and let's go to this one. Let's say this one is going to be uh, local. I'm just blindly deciding that, okay? And the estimated cost is fifteen dollars. Uh, actually, we don't know. There's um, uh, one crate, and let's say that it weighs twenty-five pounds. Uh, the size is um, um, uh, we can just pick something. Uh, I don't know what I'm not going to put in the insured value. Now here I go down and pick up the remaining four of that one, the remaining four of this one, and it pre-populates. And let's say that this one is also going to ship uh, tomorrow, okay? And the ship date hasn't occurred. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to omit this one, okay? <clears throat> so I'll get rid of that one. So now we've got two shipments where half of the line items, of the two line items, are going to each of the two locations. One is going to be shipped via UPS, and the other is going to be shipped via a local courier. Now, I'm going to go back now to the items tab. Notice that I have not put anything in here as far as what you're going to charge the customer. So going and putting information into the shipping tab that is addressing only the courier or the carrier that you're going to use to ship something. It has nothing to do whatsoever with what you're going to charge the customer. So if I'm going to uh, charge the customer for this first one, I would... Uh, I would need to add a, um, um, a shipping product, choose the shipping product um, here. Uh, actually, I'm just going <clears> to <throat> okay, custom shipping, one package, um, items per package, uh, there's four, or actually eight because there's four each. Um, shipping, you would fill in the shipping and packaging uh, criteria. Uh, the um, Let's come down here, the actual weight, um, shipping cost. Let's say that the cost is um, uh, $15. 
and it doubled it. So now what you're doing is selecting what you're caught when to charge the customer to ship those goods. You have to do that if you're going to charge. It doesn't pull anything from the shipping tab. Now, if you were integrated with these, these are the different web links that you can uh, go out to. So let's change that. So now I've got the, uh, the shipping that I've added for um, actually what I would probably do would be to uh, um, Okay, it is a, a standalone item. That's what I wanted to make sure. I would probably move it down so that I've taken care of all the shipping uh, that I'm going to charge the customer. So now when I'm done, I can simply choose the save. And uh, <clears throat> So now I've created order number uh, 1022 that has the charge for to the customer that you're going to charge the customer and it has the uh, shipping tab pre-populated um, for the carrier or carriers that you were going to use. So now let's get out of this. And let's first go to explore and see if I'm lucky here. All right, here's the order that I just created, 1022, and it's showing shipping item A and shipping item B. The shipping due date is the first of December tomorrow. Um, so that's the view using Explore to see what is happening. Now let's go back and use the dashboard. <clears throat> Look at my dashboard that I had previously created. And here's the addition of uh, the new invoice that we just created, 1022, showing the two different shipments one via that I chose UPS and one that was a local courier. Um, it's in the center here as well, uh, that it's not, um, um, hasn't been shipped yet. And um, um, I'd have to snoop here to see why it's not populating um, in the shipment detail. I don't want to take the time, but anyway, my, my point is that, you know, so the process is you, you have to go into the order. If you're going to charge the, care, the uh, customer, you have to make sure that you include the shipping product and product, uh, calculate, uh, populate it the way you want. Then you have to go into the order, uh, not necessarily in the order that I'm describing, and make sure that you choose the shipping tab for this particular order. Um, and populate all of the stuff that is for you to communicate to the carrier or communicate how you're going to ship stuff, where it's going to be delivered, how many of the items are going to go to one location, how many items, uh, which items are going to go to the second location. And they, again, the cost related to that is independent of what you may or may not choose to charge the customer for that particular shipment. One last thing that I want to show you, and then I've got some just some general stuff to comment on. Let's go up to reports. 
and come down to shipping. And there are two reports um, related to shipping. These may or may not be of interest to you. Uh, I'm going to choose all just to make sure that I see everything. And then I'll do a preview. So this first report is um, going to show you the pending, the pending um, orders that are being to be shipped. So via FedEx, I have this one order, uh, item A, for local deliveries. This is the one that I just created. And this was uh, you know, shipping item B for that uh, order 1022. And using UPS, I've got uh, two items uh, for 1021 and then the single item for 1022. Okay, so just a, a good summary report of stuff that's uh, pending related to pending shipment. The second report is um, the stuff that's already been shipped. And let's look at everything. And if I recall right, I there should be one item in here that's been shipped. Yep, this invoice number 1018 has been has been shipped. Now some of the others had been uh, have been shipped uh, already. We would have uh, you would have seen those in there. There's one thing that I forgot to show you, so I'm going to go back to that. Ah, Go back to that order that we um, that I created, 1022, and open it. Then I'm going to go over to the right, and in the action toolbar, I'm going to look at packing slips. Okay. here okay so this one uh, there, there should be two packing slips um, for a and it has four items of the digital prints and four items of the uh, the flat stock print and the second packing slip is B and it has the other four items and four items okay and this was the one that I was doing with a local um, and with a local delivery service so creating you know the populating the shipping tab and putting that information in then you can create the uh, the packing the packing slip Okay, I want to pause here, and I think before I open it up to questions, I'm just going to comment on some things that uh, that I found are fairly typical um, uh, questions that uh, have surfaced. First one is that shipments can be made to locations within the U.S. as well as internationally. So if you're using UPS or FedEx or something and you were to be shipping something that was going overseas you can you can still do that okay now the question that I uh, wouldn't have thought of that came up a while back is that you can only do a shipping for a single order so that what that means is that if you've got two different orders um, maybe 1021 and 1022 and both of those had items for UPS you can't combine those 
into one shipment. So it's limited to one order, um, and that's what would be reflected on the uh, on the uh, on the packing slip. Now, if you are a cloud user, uh, I would reach out to your um, uh, serious consultant to see how that will operate in the context of syncing with the carrier apps. That's an unknown question, you know, for myself. I think the next topic um, we've already covered in the uh, the apps for FedEx or UPS have to reside on the same network where control operates. Currently, the only two apps that I'm aware of that have the ability to uh, sync with control are FedEx and UPS. Um, in order to activate the FedEx and UPS apps, um, you have to be current on support in order to do that. Um, if there are things about the packing slip that you would like to be have customized, that is not unusual, and uh, serious tech support, you know, can do that. But there would be a charge, um, you know, to do to do so. Now, this next point is very very important, and that is if you are going to void an order that had the shipping um, stuff set up, you would have to make sure that that shipping um, tab, that you went to the shipping tab and removed those shipping parameters if you're going to void the order. Just voiding the order does not avoid the, the shipping parameters. Then if you have specific questions about how the FedEx or how the UPS apps work, that's the question that you would have to reach out to the carriers themselves to, uh, you know, to determine. And then the last question is, you know, on, on orders that you can do a percent complete, that doesn't carry over into the shipping, um, it's not related, okay? So to handle that type of ship you, uh, situation would require you to uh, um, uh, using more than one shipment. So you'd have to create a, a two or more shipments if you were going to do it on a um, on a on the on the context of of um, items that have been completed. Those are some of the typical questions that I think I've experienced and I know others have experienced. Now we've got about uh, seven or eight minutes left, so I'm just going to open this up to uh, any questions uh, that anyone might have. Um, okay, so we have a question from Stacy. Is it possible to put multiple orders into one shipment? And the answer is no. The, uh, the shipping, the shipping parameters, the shipping tab, can only be uh, unique to one order, and the actual physical shipping, there's no means of connecting two orders together to do that. Okay, um, and I think that's it for today. Anything else? Okay, just as a reminder, there's. Um, you know, December is a um, the week that we would be doing this uh, next Seer Skills uh, uh, sessions is the week of uh, after Christmas. So the offices are going to be closed on the 26th, which would be the next typical date. On the 28th, which is the Thursday, there will be a, a webinar. But it's going to be uh, an open forum um, to cover any questions that you might have. 
Now, within the next several days, I'm going to be putting together a summary of all of the things that we've talked about um, in the last seven months uh, since we started the uh, the SEER skills. And those will be uh, kind of the focus of what we want the questions to pertain to, but not restricted to that. So just to, for right now, just as a reminder, there will be one session in December, and that's going to be the Thursday, the 28th. And the every all of the offices, including myself, we will be unavailable on the 26th. So, Paul, we do have one uh, question from Marilyn. Okay. okay. Hi, Marilyn. Hi, Marilyn. Did she type a question? Mm. Let's see. Marilyn, is there, is there a blind shipping packing list form? Oh, she doesn't have a mic. <laughs> right. Um, is there a blind shipping packing list? You're referring to a to the packing slip. I'm not exactly sure that I follow what you mean by the by the by the question. Can you type and clarify what you're thinking? Granger, is that a particular carrier? The packing slips are, they're not structured to a particular carrier. Um, let's look at one. Let's look at this one, and I'm going to go to the packing slips. The format of the packing slip is the same, regardless of who the carrier is. Now, you do have some uh, options here, but the, the header and that kind of stuff, what it looks like is the same whether it's UPS or FedEx or DHL or you're using a local a local courier. So I, I'm still not 100% sure, Marilyn, that I'm that I'm. Um, I think that maybe what she's asking is, um, so they're shipping for somebody else, so they don't want their name to be on the packing list. So is there, it's almost uh, like they're, um, it's supposedly coming from Granger and not from that. I, okay, I think then the answer to that question is if we open up the order, uh, I'll um, get too quick here just a second. I think that's an example of <clears throat> In the uh, shipping tab, in the shipping tab, um, instead of the store being chosen, that's where that would be an example of where you would use a third party that it's being shipped from a third party. And then you would just simply enter, <clears throat> you would simply enter who the company is, how you want to describe them, any information about the contact, and then information about the shipping from address. So I think the answer to your question is, that's an example of using a third party as the ship from. Okay, yes. 
Um, and then we have one final question from Gina. Okay. okay. Hi, Gina. Hi. I think my question is um, more on can we run a report based on the SHIP-2 um, addresses specifically like for certain states that we ship to versus an order. And this might be something I did call in earlier um, with a uh, requesting a tech support uh, return call or, um, so this might be something specific more toward that versus within this module. So I, think, I don't know I if think you would I be would, the one. No, I think I would agree that that is, a, that is something that would be have to be done unique for yourself, um, you know, to either tailor a report so that it looks at the um, more about the carrier that you're using. Um, I don't think that it would be a generic. You know, just look at the uh, pending. What we're trying to do is there's a company, there's states that um, that if we have a presence on, then we have to charge a certain sales tax. And so I need sure. to be able to run a report based on a ship to address. And I want to make sure the right tax is put on that order with the county. And so I guess I need to know like where, and I think I know where we would enter that ship to address to be able to pull the information. But I can wait for uh, tech support to give me a call back, um, yeah. you know, after this think, webinar is over. Yeah, they're they're going to be better suited to answer your questions. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Okay, and then we also want to remind everybody about um, our new employee training on the second week of uh, the month of December, and you'll yeah, get be getting some. Yep. Yeah. Twelve and twelve and fourteen. You'll we'll be getting four. some information for marketing on that. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much, Paul. This All was right. really helpful. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. Uh -huh. Have Take a good care. weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.